Hi, I'm Roger Margolis, Vice President of Radar at O'Reilly. I'm here at the Software Architecture Conference in New York uh, for 2019. I'm here with Simon Jones, who is the VP of Marketing for PubNub. What is PubNub? Tell us about it. Tell us what you guys do. Well, thanks for inviting me. Uh, PubNub is a company that helps customers to build real-time applications. So think chat, uh, device control in the world of IoT, uh, those little cars that run around on maps uh, for rideshare, uh, things like that. Um, we've been around for about 10 years, and you know the way we see it is our customers are really uh, changing products, changing industries, changing human experience with the intelligent application of real time. Right, so that's kind of that's kind of a fancy thing you'd expect a marketing guy to say. So let me put a little bit of meat on the bones. Sure. Um, if you think about the ways that technology have really changed the way that we live, as often as not, it turns out to be through real-time infrastructure. Right. So you and I both have spent a long time in the Bay Area. We remember when ride sharing started, and when you cut away all of the nonsense in the marketing, what really mattered was somebody who needed a ride could find somebody who wanted to, to, to give them a ride, right? You remember back in the 90s, you couldn't get a taxi for love nor money. Yeah. Um, and so it's that sort of thing that changes things. Um, similarly, we see in the world, for instance, of exercise, right? Uh, most people have seen Peloton on the television, these, these fantastic exercise bikes that don't collect dust in your garage. And the reason they don't is because of a big screen and you can join a real spinning class in New York, in LA, or whatever. And what makes it work is that the bicycle sends readings from its sensors back into Central, and you can see how you're doing on screen. The instructor can see what you're doing. The instructor can send you a high five. And so this whole industry of home exercise has changed. And we're seeing this across industries all across the world. And we're bringing people closer together, giving the opportunity to see what's happening right as it happens. Uh, and there's some really exciting things happening right now. Okay, you gave the example of, is it Peloton or Peloton? Peloton, yes. Peloton. Uh, any other examples that are worth getting a little more detail on? Sure, um, so one of the things that's been really interesting recently is working with companies who um, run let's call it sort of user-generated video or, or slightly above user-generated video, the sort of stuff that isn't on the television but is really capturing most of the eyeballs today. Uh, you look at companies like, uh, like Rooster Teeth, for instance, um, or, or Twitch, right, where people film themselves while they are doing something, uh, whether it's making a show or whether it's just playing a game or these days actually developing. Apparently this is the new thing. You can sit and watch a developer develop in real time. Uh, I'm uh, too old for that, but um, what's happening is these environments are coming back around to the concept of social interaction during the viewing. Um, and today's real-time application allows them to build really engaging experiences. So it's not how it used to be where you just sort of tippity-tap some stuff in and there it is. Um, they're inventing their own languages. They're inventing their own patois. So you can use different switches to change how things happen. They're embedding emojis, embedding uh, you know, pictures, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And what's happening now is if you look at the world of kind of the younger viewer, um, people aren't necessarily tipping up on Thursday evening to watch Friends. They're cracking into the latest content from influencers they're interested in and communities are building up around them. And so as we look forward, um, you know, it, it turns out that what used to be the one directional um, experience of watching, watching video is becoming the, the building of community. And we're, we're working with a number of really interesting companies um, who, are, who are leveraging that and making something where a community can sustain itself and really become something that's going to go offline. The other thing we see, by the way, is um, folks who build apps, right? Apps that have communities to them, right? So whether it's, I, I don't know, going to a place to, uh, to meet, sort of the Airbnb meets couch surfing type thing, um, or even the delivery companies. Uh, what they're seeing is that, yes, it works for sort of a, a, a specific outcome, right? So if you call a, a food delivery, yes, okay, it drops you some food. Um, but what consumers want today is to be able to have a community that they want to be able to communicate in real time. 
And a lot of our customers are telling us, well, it's great and all, but people keep dropping out of my app and getting into a WhatsApp or, or something along those lines. We now want that experience to be inside. So once again, community forms around the services that are being produced. So, you know, when I say we're, we're helping people to change products, industries, and human experience, sure, it's a little bit, um, it's a little bit poetic, a little bit aspirational, but what I see out in the marketplace is that's genuinely what's happening. That sounds great. What, um, what do you get when you get PubNub? Like, where, where does your service begin and end? That's a wonderful question. Um, so, what we provide is a series of APIs um, that allow you to build the applications very quickly, and obviously with the amount of SDKs we deliver, you can write to pretty much any device known to man. Um, those APIs then push uh, the messages into our data stream network. And the data stream network, sort of the, the short version of it is that it's a global pub-sub network, and it has a, a really sophisticated orchestration layer that connects all of the pops that we have around the world. Um, the reason that's important is that when you post a message into the data stream, you're guaranteed that anybody anywhere in the world can grab that within a quarter of a second. Our, our actual latencies are much lower, but you know, always always do better than you promise, right? right. Um, and so really what, what happens is if you're building a teeny tiny little real-time app, a chat for 20 people who are going to talk about Beanie Babies or some such, it's not wildly difficult to build. You drop a socket I.O. server somewhere and start coding. As your audience gets larger uh, and more geographically distributed, building infrastructure to support it turns out to be really complicated, finicky, um, and takes a lot of time to, to keep running effectively. So folks really look to us when they're looking for uh, speed, reliability, and scale, frankly. Uh, today, we send twice as many messages per day as Snapchat, Twitter, and the global SMS system combined. So we haven't yet come across anybody who's going to uh, blow us up with the scale they bring. I hope to, that would be very <laughs> exciting. Uh, but really those are, the, those are the pieces that really drive mm -hmm. people to use PubNub. And where are you kind of heading in the future? What kind of technologies and? That's a great question. You know, the reality is that we're driven to a large degree by what our customers are trying to do. Um, many of our customers today are building chat and making that chat far more expansive. Um, so for instance, um, we built into our system a, a serverless capability. So you can build functions into the network. Uh, and so they're now connecting to other microservices, right? So for instance, you could have two people having a chat, one only speaks English, one only speaks Spanish. You can build functions into the network so that as each message hits, it's quickly passed against, say, an Amazon or, or an IBM translation machine and then passed straight on. So without losing more than 100, 150 milliseconds, one speaking Spanish, one speaking English, nobody knows the difference. So that's fantastic. Um, and really the essence of what we do is to deliver APIs that are extensible so people are building innovative apps rather than thinking about just like how do I make the servers work. But I do think going forward um, the ability to share these streams of data very quickly, very reliably uh, is moving us in the direction of the event-driven architecture space, which I think is really just forming. I think you can say event-driven and everybody nods, uh, and then you scratch the surface and they start looking uncomfortable. Um, but as we look at the way in which apps are increasingly loosely or even not really coupled um, and need better and better ways to communicate across themselves, we're now starting to see folks architecting really interesting ways to use both the uh, the live connection uh, to connect apps that may be running in wildly different places and then using our history and playback capabilities to make sure that if they don't want to get everything right at the second that they can hook back in and poll at a, at a, a rate that is comfortable for their application and pull back sort of chunks of data. Um, so I really think that over the next 24 months we'll be seeing a lot more activity in, in that space as we all as an industry get a little bit more, more sort of comfortable with it. Fascinating. We've covered a lot of topics here today. Thanks for spending time with us. Thanks for having me.